How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show, we're going to be taking a look at the confirmation the Euro 2020 has been cancelled until 2021. UEFA also expect all the major European leagues to complete their seasons by the end of June. Barnet, they're having to lay off all non-playing staff due to the coronavirus. And Blaise Matuidi is the latest player to confirm he has the coronavirus. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing, guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So, of course, the first place to start is Euro 2020 and the confirmation that the tournament has been cancelled until 2021. It was pretty inevitable that this was going to happen after the coronavirus outbreak and the uncertainty as to when we're actually going to get to play football again. And um, UEFA have confirmed that they have moved it until 2021. Um, the news was first confirmed by the Norwegian FA on social media, with UEFA later proposing the competition will be played between June the 11th and July the 11th, 2021. The playoffs for Euro 2020, which will include the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, have also been postponed. The semi-finals were originally set to take place on March the 26th, with the finals on March the 31st. Those fixtures have instead now been postponed until June. UEFA said in a statement, UEFA today announced the postponement of its flagship national team competition, UEFA Euro 2020, due to be played in June and July this year. The health of all those involved in the game is the priority, as well as to avoid placing an unnecessary pressure on national public service involved in staging matches. The move will help all domestic competitions currently on hold due to the COVID-19 emergency to be completed. Now, that takes me straight on to the next story as well, with um, UEFA, you know, talking about they've set a deadline for the end of June for all European domestic leagues to complete their seasons. It is hoped the coronavirus pandemic will relent to the extent that play can resume as a preference over concluding competitions early with incomplete fixture lists. Should that be the case, it would see leagues in leading nations finished exactly a month after the original end date of May the 30th. The statement says there may be possible limitations or drops of current exclusive calendar slots, potentially resulting in the scheduling of domestic league matches in midweek and scheduling of UEFA club competition matches on weekends. It also mentions possible adaptions of the 2020-21 Champions League and Europa League qualifying rounds, which ordinarily begin in July for most teams. Most clubs in the Premier League and Scottish Premier have closed their training grounds with players currently working on fitness themselves at home. Top flight fixtures in England are currently suspended until April the 3rd with that date widely expected to be pushed back. Scottish games at all levels, including grassroots, were put on hold on Friday with no return date in place. European football has committed to finish this season by June the 30th. This includes the Premier League, EFL, SPFL, Champions League and Europa League. Clearly there's a big if there. We are in fluid situation and there are a large quantity of unknowns. But June the 30th is the target they are working towards. Their commitment to the games. Now... What I will say to that is that we have some clarity that that is kind of the cutoff point, June the 30th. I personally don't think we are going to get any football before June the 30th. We are certainly not going to be able to conclude leagues by June the 30th. Most, you know, countries and especially England right now are going through a really bad time and it's only going to get worse. There's no way we're going to be back playing at the start of April. 
And I don't think that we're going to get these done, you know, by the end of June. It's as simple as that. It's that bad out there that I just don't think we're going to see any football. And then they're going to have to make those decisions, void seasons, the implications and everything else. The knock-on effect is huge. Um, now, the next story involves Barnett and um, sad news this. And it just shows the effect of the coronavirus to the lower league clubs. And this is something that I was mentioning, you know, in other daily news and everything else. And we talk about the big clubs and, you know, missing out on titles or a European place and everything else. And we've got it easy in comparison to these lower league clubs. Now, uh, Barnet have had to lay off all non-playing staff with cash flow affected by the suspension of games. Um, Barnet have had to put all their non-league playing staff on immediate notice of redundancy with 60 people set to lose their jobs because of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, Barnet's chairman met with all the affected staff members on Tuesday, having been forced into the decision with no cash flow coming into the National League club. A Barnet statement revealed the club is suffering operational losses of around about £100,000 per month and that the coronavirus outbreak had provided further significant challenges. The National League did play on for one more weekend than the Premier League and EFL, but Barnet's clash with Yeovil on Saturday was one of those which did not go ahead as four members of staff had to be isolated because they were showing symptoms of coronavirus. Barnet's parachute funding in place since their most recent relegation from League Two also comes to an end following the 2019-2020 season. Um, the Barnet chairman goes on to say that our greatest concern is that within the UK and across the entire world, people are losing loved ones. Our sympathies and thoughts go out to everyone affected right now. I have to focus my attentions closer to home and look at the impact it's having on our club. That's mad when you think about it. 60 odd people are going to be made redundant and losing their jobs because of the coronavirus. And, you know, all you've got to look at and just try and hope and pray that someone from the bigger leagues or can help out and try and, you know, see what they can do. Try and, you know, stop these people from losing their jobs. Maybe help Barnet in the short term until everybody's back on their feet because that's what we need to do right now. Everybody needs to chip in and help each other. So tough times for Barnet and um, interesting to see what happens in the near future. Um, last piece of news is that Juventus and France midfielder Blaise Mutuidi has been tested positive for coronavirus. A statement on Juventus's website read, the player as of Wednesday the 11th of March has been in voluntarily home isolation. He will continue to be monitored and will follow the same regime. He is well and doing okay. Now, what can you say? It just keeps on escalating. And this is the thing that we keep talking about. And, um, you know, all we can do is wish Blaise Matuidi well and hope he recovers um, and, you know, he gets the treatment he needs. But it's another player. It's the second Juventus player. Um, you know, there was one last week, it was uh, Daniel Regani that was tested positive last week. And um, you've just got the feeling that this is going to be a continual cycle, that players each week are going to keep getting tested positive. And when these players are in isolation and not even in the game, and they're starting to test positive, it just shows that it's not within football that they're picking up this virus. So, um, tough times ahead, that's for sure. So there we go. That is it for today's DT Daily. Um, as usual, let me know in the comment section what you think of today's news. Um, I will be coming back a little bit later today with another reaction video. Um, and then again, some news tomorrow. So until then, I'll see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.